Okay, we're going to talk about the structure of an atom, which you may have a general overview of from the timeline of how atomic theory has changed. Okay, so quick review that matter is anything that has mass or takes up space. So literally everything. The air you breathe technically has a mass and it takes up space, so it is matter. So most of the things you know or can think of are matter because they all have mass and they all take up space. Okay, elements. So elements um, are excuse me, are matter that is composed of one single type of atom. So there are lots and lots of different types of atoms, but each element has their own very specific type of atom. When we talk about elements, or we've named our elements, we've named these specific type of atoms, and when we talk about them, they are um, typically really scientific names and are abbreviated with either a single letter or a pair of letters called a chemical symbol. So a letter on its own is always capitalized. Example, hydrogen is always a capital H. Oxygen is always a capital O. They only have single letter symbols. A two-letter pair has the first letter capitalized and the second one lowercase. So, for example, aluminum is capital A, lowercase l, or copper is capital C, lowercase u. Some of them, sometimes they make really good sense as far as they're just the beginning of the actual name of the element, and some don't make so much sense. For example, aluminum, al is just the beginning of aluminum, and copper but copper, C-U, is not the beginning of copper. It's actually a Latin um, word. It comes from cupric, which also means copper, but in Latin. So that's where the abbreviation for that came from. And that happens a lot on the periodic table. Okay, so uh, atomic structure. So really quickly, an atom is the smallest piece of matter that still has the properties of the element. So in other words, I could uh, test a huge piece of a single thing, like a big bar of iron, um, and it would have a certain set of properties or characteristics. And then I could test a single atom of iron, and it should have those exact same properties. Um, in a structure of an atom, there are three main pieces. There are protons, and these are positively charged, and protons are in the nucleus. So the nucleus is the center of the atom. So the protons are in the nucleus. There are neutrons, which are neutral or have no charge, and those are also located in the nucleus. And then we have electrons, which are negatively charged, um, and they rotate around the nucleus. Um, depending on which theory you're looking at, might be in orbitals, might be in clouds. So the nucleus is located in the center of the atom and consists of protons and neutrons. So protons and neutrons are always housed in the center of the nucleus. Electrons surround the nucleus. Okay, so the Bohr model, this is one of the big ones that we learn, and it talks about electro how electrons orbit the nucleus in different energy levels. The electrons that are closest to the nucleus are the lowest energy. That's because it doesn't take a lot of energy to keep those um, at electrons in orbit. If you remember space, we talked about how the closer planets are going to uh, be f uh, more gravitationally drawn to the sun. Well, the same thing happens for the electrons that are orbiting the nucleus. The electrons that are closer to the nucleus are more easily drawn to orbit the nucleus. Those that are furthest away, it takes a lot more energy to keep them in orbit. So they are the highest energy. Uh, the first shell orbiting the nucleus holds two electrons, and each additional shell will hold eight electrons. And this is called an octet. So here is our diagram. Okay, we have our nucleus in here, our protons and neutrons. Here, the first orbit has two. See, two electrons max. The second one has eight electrons max, and the third one also has eight. Now we can determine an element's um, location, or excuse me, we can determine an element's identity by looking at its protons, which we'll talk about next time, um, or on the next video. But uh, the current accepted model is called the electron cloud model. Um, it shows that electrons travel in specific energy levels around the nucleus. Again, electrons closest to the nucleus have low energy, electrons furthest away have higher energy. So this is kind of what it looks like. So the, the red is the nucleus, and then all these blue dots around it. Notice how they're really congested or really tight, and there's a lot of blue around the um, nucleus. Well, the blue 
dictates the percentage chance or the chance that there is a nucleus or excuse me an electron there at any given time. So the bluer it is, the more likely there's a uh, electron there, and the less blue it is, the less likely there is an electron. The, so there tends to be less electrons out towards the edge than there is towards the center. And this is because it takes so much energy to hold the electrons in when they're this far out, but not a lot of energy to hold them in when they're this far out. All right, that's it.